This is The Culture. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Jersey's Finest. It's been a minute since we've been back here. This time we are talking to someone very special and someone who is one of our co-hosts' absolute best friends. My name is Darian Scalamoni. I'm going to be one of your hosts. Another one of my hosts is Zach Miller. How's it going? How's it going? And our guest for today is writer, director, and comedian, and another former FPAC alum, Mikey Smith. Mikey, what's, what's going, going on, on, man? What's going on, guys? Thanks what's for up, having buddy? me. What's up? Thanks this is me. this is my first time formally meeting you. We've yeah, we talked about that. We we've, we've seen each other in passing, but we've never we can't confirm that we've actually like actually we can't recall the exact point of reference where exactly. we met each other. Yeah. Um, but I did know that you were best friends with Zach, and I one of the things I want to talk to you about like right away is you're someone that has worked now on both coasts, which is very interesting to me because I've never been in that situation. Uh, you were living in New Jersey. You were in the FPAC program like we were. And then you moved to LA. What was it about a year ago? Uh, yeah, a year and a month. Okay. A month, yeah. So can you tell me first of all, what that experience has been like for you, but also what is like the difference for you in terms of the working environments? Cause I'm very curious. Well, uh, this is a good question. Um, I will say I was a little unfortunate. And I, so I moved out there with uh, three of my really good friends from college. We're in a sketch comedy group together. And so we moved out there together to pursue that and just pursue careers in entertainment in general. Um, we happened to move out a few months before. I don't know if you guys know, there was a little, there were a few strikes that happened this year. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> that kinda... they've been covered on this network. A little <laughs> yeah. bit, at so, least. Oh, good. Okay, good. Uh, I don't think it, it wasn't uh, getting any coverage, which is good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, no, I'm very happy that they happened. But uh, it, that put us into a bit of a bind where, you know, we were out there to do stuff and then the industry stopped. And so, you know, not that we were out there getting offers left and right before that, but it stopped us to be able to move forward uh, through what we thought we were going to be doing. Um, and then in terms of, you know, I mean, I, I feel like the, there's a lot of differences between L.A. and just Jersey Northeast, you know, and all the people we've met out there. Like there's an, I don't think I've met like maybe a handful of people that are actually from L.A. Like every person we meet, where are you from? Oh, Chicago or Washington, D.C. or like no one's from L.A., which is weird. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say, honestly, like the biggest thing that I've noticed, and it's not so much that it's only in L.A., but the biggest thing I've noticed about just like film in general is that literally every cliche about film and TV is true. Like everything. Like, I, I mean, you know, and it, they're all things that like I knew and was told, like, you know, it's who you know, right? Like that's a big cliche. Yeah. Um, so true. Like so true that there's just so many instances where it's like, wow, if I didn't know that person, then I wouldn't have gotten that opportunity. If I didn't get that opportunity, I wouldn't have met that person. You know, so it like that is 100 percent true. So, yeah, it's been a lot of like, uh, you know, you go to film school, you learn all that stuff, but then actually see it in practice and like see that it's true and like it works. Like mm -hmm. that's definitely, you know, pretty crazy. Do you think that most of the people that you've come across since you've been on the West Coast have been like people that have worked in media some way, shape or form or like at least aspiring artists? I feel like that's again, that might be a cliche within itself, but it no, feels but like true. that's a big it's part true. of the melting pot. That's oh, there. yeah. And um, a big thing, too, with L.A. that we didn't really experience until a few months in is that. Um, you know, like imposter syndrome, right? Like that's a big thing and a lot of creators and why people get discouraged and, um, and, you know, move away from the entertainment industry. But I've had moments where, you know, I'm sitting at a cafe and I'm like, I'm going to go write my script. Like, you know, hot, I feel like I'm like, can I curse on this? Or yeah. yeah. Okay. So I, feel like I'm like, I feel like I'm like hot shit, you know, like walking in and then I'm typing, drinking my Americano. I'm like, Oh hell yeah. And then I look over and I see a guy writing a script doing the exact same thing. I'm like, fuck. Man, like, <laughs> damn it. Um, so you do like really feel like at least three out of every 10 people in a coffee shop is in the entertainment industry, at least. And it's probably more. Um, and that's why the strikes were so devastating. Like uh, one of my roommates is a, a server at a, at a restaurant and uh, his business or like his where he works, um, they had to cut down their days that they're open from like seven to three. And, uh, and a lot of businesses shut down because L.A. is so dependent on the entertainment industry that wow. it like really struggled because no one wanted to spend money. They yeah, weren't yeah. making money. Um, so, yeah, I would definitely say the cliches of, you know, oh, L.A. is such a entertainment hub. And it, it's so true. And it feels more so than New York in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. um, at least for film and TV. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, so going 
Mikey, I've known you for far too long. Like honestly, too at long. this point, I just I don't know why we keep you around. But you know, obviously, I mean, I, I moved all the way to the West Coast, and I still can't get rid of you. Yeah, other. well, now I'm just trying to get an interview after, after this, and then What's I don't know question? what we're gonna What's do. Your question, my really? question, my question for you is, <laughs> where did you, I'm gonna make this about myself now? No, okay. no, I'm not no. now. now. <laughs> now okay, okay. <laughs> where did you get your start so going so you got all the way out to la but people want to know now what what got you your start like there just go into a little bit of your background with with how you know <laughs> we started to make our stuff with um you know backyard filmmaking and then it, and then it transitioned to high school and college so so just to start with it like what what kind of inspired you that got you into film in that respective regard I don't remember a specific like like I couldn't tell you like a specific movie that I would, you know, like die on the hill that like that was the film that, you know, or anything like that. I mean, I, I do remember key moments was um, I remember my brother when he was in high school. And I mean, I still to this day, I looked up I look up to him for like everything. And uh, he him and his friend decided to make those like PVC like lightsabers that people were doing it in like mid mid to late 2000s. <clears throat> and so him and his buddy made those and then like added on the lightsabers like probably in I don't know Windows Movie Maker or something I don't know something and they had this whole like choreographed fight scene and it was so intense and we filmed it like in the basin that's the water basin right next to my house where we filmed a bunch of stuff before. And I remember seeing that and that was like, whoa, like they're do like the choreography was so cool and it felt so real. And then seeing the finished product it was like, holy crap. And then I would say from that point until uh, 2008, so that was probably like 2005, six, 2008, uh, I went to go see Avatar and that blew my mind. I mean, I was sitting, I went with my mom and my sisters, but we didn't have enough seats um, to all sit together. It was at the brick AMC pre leather chairs. Yes. So like, you know, you're like <laughs> a hard time for all. Oh yeah. Like <laughs> arena seating. You're just like, you know, crammed in there. And I was sitting by myself. And so I really had this like full sensory experience. And you know, I mean, it's not like a perfect movie. I don't, it's not like my favorite movie, but I definitely remember just with the, the score is so beautiful and the cinematography and the visual effects and just everything. And it's such a triumphant, like nature versus man story. Like it was just all these like positive things. Uh, so I remember that being like a key kind of moment for me where I was like, wow, that's like really cool. It didn't make me want to then go make films right away. That wasn't until middle school. Um, but that was like a key moment for me being like, damn, like that's, mm. it's really cool stuff. And your family has such a, big background and just music too in general like your sisters your mom especially w what kind of moved you off of i mean you still kind of pursued band and stuff in in high school and and before that but what what moved you away from music and specifically movies was there a difference between the two for you or was there just something that you wanted to pursue specifically in movies i think this is another good question you guys are you should do this more <laughs> <laughs> um I think for me, like in middle school, you know, I went to the same middle school that all my siblings did. I'm the youngest of four. And so I kind of just copied whatever they did. So like they all did, you know, band chorus and the spring musical. And so I did the same thing. And I think that was and where you mentioned, like, is there a difference? I feel like there isn't necessarily a difference in why I switched more to one thing versus the other. I think it's just that in middle school, I fell in love with entertaining and like being a performer and an entertainer in any facet. So you know, was never the best singer, was never the best dancer, loved doing the musicals. And, and that was so much fun to perform. And I think that was kind of my intro to comedy before I actually did comedy, like mm -hmm. just being able to say a funny line and then get a laugh and be like, whoa, you know, and so that kick started it for sure. But then when we started making, you know, those like crappy, you know, YouTube, like uh, web series and whatever that we thought we were like, you know, so cool when we did it um but making those that was really a key moment where i was like wow this is really satisfying because you can kind of you have full control over the whole thing and it's still an ensemble gig right like you can't you know can't make a film by yourself but it felt more manageable and more kind of you know you can control what happens and how you do it and so i think that just led me into high school and then you know like like all of us here we you know did the same program and changed my life for mm -hmm. sure I and mean, i'm sure it did for you guys as yeah, well yeah because i one of the things you were just talking about how you love to entertain and things like that uh the difference for me in terms of like comedy versus filmmaking i mean they they somewhat go hand in hand but like you were saying comedy to me feels very immediate and it requires so much of an attention and an absorption of 
other people, like you said, you, you get a laugh and then all the attention is on you with filmmaking. Like you said, it's this ensemble sort of process. Do you prefer that more so than comedy? Cause you're doing comedy at the same time now, or do you have, are they different lanes for you? Film is just so cool. Like film is so cool. Like I love comedy and I never, I mean, you could ask anybody in my family, anybody in my life, like I never would have pursued comedy at all, let alone move across the country to go do it. Never would have done that. I mean, like I, I like sure I love comedies. I love watching it. I love stand up specials. I love all that stuff. But never in a million years would I, you know, said, oh, I'm going to move to L.A. with three guys and a sketch comedy. Like never would have guessed that. So so glad I did. Like so grateful for that. And I love that. Um, but I find that with sketch and improv comedy um, specifically, there, there there are similarities, but they, they do lean more towards, you know, theater, less film. Mm. Yeah. And there are, you know, like we make like video sketches and especially longer ones. We try to intertwine those with live performances. So we'll do like, you know, we'll do a live sketch and then the lights will go down. We'll play a video sketch and during the blackout while we change and then we'll do the next sketch. So we try to make it like a kind of full experience. But film is just like it's so satisfying and, and it's frustrating as hell. But it's it's just that type of thing where you, you work together, you plan, you prep, you prep, you prep, you prep, you make it it's hopefully not garbage and then you edit it and then you're like, ah, it's kind of garbage. And then you, and then you <laughs> but then once everything comes together and with color and whatever, and that's like, Oh, that's actually, it's not bad. And then, mm -hmm. and then you show it to people and they're like, nice job. And you're like, yeah, hell yeah. You know, like, yeah. so it, it's a really satisfying process more so than comedy. Comedy is like you write a joke, you practice it, you hope it lands, you say it, you get a laugh. You're like, huh, cool. But with film, it's like, you know, if someone said, Oh, I got chills at that one line or, yeah. Oh, the way you, film like the way it was filmed like was like that's like that means so much more it's really to me. cool like it's so much more impactful and yeah, i mean i i'm tending to lean more towards making comedic films right now which is funny because to uh, who asked who asked the question that was me okay yeah. sorry i just <laughs> went too many of these uh, no but uh but you know so they they do find a way to blend themselves a lot um and i think i've found more of a kind of my own personal kick with making comedy films I think that's like the perfect blend for me between sketch and film. Yeah, that's a really good take too because I feel like comedy, it can be kind of objective sometimes where it's either you're funny or you're not. I mean, everybody has different styles of humor and senses of humor, but I think kind of to your point of film, there's there's so many different ways you could make a film. There's so many different things you could, you could say um just through film and, and then all the different processes so i i think that's a really good point of just how film can carry all this it carries a vulnerability but it, it's it's so gratifying once you have that process pay off in the end so yeah kind of what you're talking about um i just want to jump into another question with you know what like you've made so many different films over the years like i know we started out we we did a lot of like action projects like you you started with action and we, I've, it's really it's been really cool to see your work like mature over the years and and just also dip into different styles um and, and just ways that you you've really focused on like thoroughly um workshopping your scripts and stuff like that as well as as just the technicalities of it but what kind of stories do you kind of gravitate towards as a director or a writer too in specific i mean well, I think like stylistically, it, it has changed over the years. I mean, I've always enjoyed and had such a love for action films. I just think they're so fun, whether it's like a John Wick or a superhero movie, I'm, you know, big in all this stuff, Star Wars, of course. Um, but I also think. Excuse me. Sorry. I told you the beer. It's a bad idea. I'm going to be burping this whole time. Um, I, I think for me, where I've kind of leaned into I know that a, a big thing in what I like to do and what I've been noticing, especially in my writing recently within the last year or two, is that I prefer to definitely make people laugh. I think there's just not that there's not a place for it. And I'll go watch a movie about, you know, a, you know, a crazy, horrible tragedy and, and love it. But I think there's just so much stuff out there that's like already kind of negative and can bring you down and and show you a horror of the world and be like, man, that's really scary. And, and there's a place for that. That's so important. I'm not saying that's not valid, but if I can just bring a little bit of light into that, hopefully, if I can make one person laugh, then it's like, 
I did my job. Mm. Um, so definitely films that make people laugh. But then a thing that I really love that filmmakers like uh, Taika Waititi and um, Edgar Wright and even Greta Gerwig too, like all these different directors who make you laugh and like loosen you up and then they just boom, hit you with that gut punch and it just hurts that much more because your, your, your guard is down. Uh, I mean, the, my immediate thought of like something I go towards is like Jojo Rabbit. I, that's the exact like, thing I thought of. When yeah, you said like that. It, yeah, like that. I, I just got chills like thinking about it because that's such an important pivotal moment in the film. And the whole time you're laughing, it's this goofy Taika Waititi film. And then boom, you see that you see the shoes. And I'm, I think I audibly was like, oh, like it just it hits yeah. like that much harder. And I think finding a way to match comedy and drama is really where I kind of meet in the middle. Um, so that that's I think that's more so where I where I lean. Um, and then you know I mean I I also love films with you know uh, friendship. I think that's a big theme through a lot of my films, whether it's you know parents to kids or whether it's just friend to friend or whatever. I, I just think friendship is definitely a through line through a lot of my films that um, showcase on a you know something more positive. Uh, if you will hmm. yeah i want to go back to something you said a couple questions ago and this is for like all of us we can just make this a roundabout <laughs> discussion but i love the one part where you were talking about how when you go through the process of making a film and at the end regardless of like when it comes together you're like oh this is all right like there's never a point at least this is how i feel too and i feel like maybe you feel similarly i don't know about you zach but like there's never a point where you feel fully fulfilled by anything you've ever done do yeah. you feel like you have gotten to that i mean we're still all very young but it's like have you gotten to a point yet that you've seen something through where you felt fully fulfilled or is it always like i need to get to this magnum opus sort of thing at some point in my life something or maybe a story or a message that comes through that really makes you feel fulfilled by it well i'll say that I, so no i don't no i haven't been i've been fulfilled through experience not through product like film experience yeah like set I, and things like like that. when i made my senior thesis film that was like one of the best weekends of my life like it was such a fun experience and it was stressful it was tense i mean you, you know you were on that set and it was just like it was but it was so much fun i had such there were just it was everyone i loved was there it was a great great set great energy and it was just so much fun and all the shots looked amazing it was like i was like so happy as a you know kid in a candy store um, now the film itself, I had many critiques of, you know, like I wasn't so fulfilled with that, but the experience I always find, and it's like the people you make it with, um, that's where I get fulfilled. But in terms of, you know, like, have I kind of reached not necessarily my peak, but like, have I reached that top of the mountain? So I know like what's up there hundred percent. No, like, <clears throat> And I think any filmmaker who says that they have, I think they've, they probably should just retire at that point because yeah. like yeah. It, it, you have to have that drive of being like, man, that film was so close to being perfect. I got to try again on the next one. Like yeah. it had, you have to have that like competitive energy, not in the sense to make yourself better than other people, but just competitive, like with yourself, like you have to hold yourself to a higher level to be like, I need to keep getting better. Mm. And each film, you know, uh, I think, um, Tarantino has a great quote, like, uh, filmmakers, or directors are uh, different than athletes. They get better with age. Mm -hmm. And it's true. Like you see filmmakers, you're like, wow, that was such a better film than their first film. Like it's just, it's just mm -hmm. true. It takes over time. But, um, but yeah, so fulfilled by experience, not by product. What That's about, a really what about good, you? good way to put it. Yeah. Well, just, it's kind of the same thing. I, I feel like you're, you're doing yourself a disservice if you think that you have reached this, this mountaintop, like you were saying. And there's, there's always something to learn about, art and the medium in general and if you're making films like why stop at some point you know like there's there's no cap on the limitations or how many movies you can make or, or what you should make and i think that's the best part about the medium too is, is just what you can do with it and how how does it speak volumes to people so that's a, that's a really good good way to put it too and I, I like that you've you've had the experience value too of just like making stuff and i know you're not enjoying it it's like yeah. why the hell are you doing it like I'm, right I'm not, truth truthfully like i i'm very passionate about like what i write and what i make and like i, I am i'm not saying like i just do it for fun but like if you're not the whole point of like filmmaking is to yes create an impact yes connect with audiences but it's still like enjoy what you're like the whole the cliche again another cliche the cliche of like oh like uh, you work in film it's like well i don't work in film like because it doesn't feel like a job like that whole cliche it's so true like and we've talked about this too where you go on some sets and granted not every position is as glorious and beautiful on the outside as others right but 
you know, we, we, you've been on sets where there's just people that are, you know, twice your age and they just seem so grumpy and unhappy. And I don't believe that that's their fault. I believe it's the people running the set because yeah. they're, they're, you have to create a positive event. It's like environment. This yeah. isn't, yeah. I get it's stressful. There's a lot of money being burned, but it's like, you got to, this is supposed to be fun. Like this is, yeah. we're creating why would you go to rhythm. another career path yeah. if yeah. it wasn't like if, fun? Yeah. Like go work at like Home Depot if you want, like not, well, no shot, no shame. <laughs> Home, we need you guys, but. But like, it's like, if you want to create films, that's why you, to have fun, you want to create film. So I feel like, yeah, you yeah. Gotta, that's the experience is so important. Yeah. And I think people lose sight of that too, when they get older and they're on set and it does become comfortable for people to just fall into it. Like, yeah, it's a job and it, it is a tough job sometimes. And you're doing long days. You got to take it seriously. Yeah, it's a job. Exactly. But, but I, I, to your point, you, you have to acknowledge that this is, this is an art medium too. And, and also like people who treat it too seriously sometimes too is it's like we're not saving lives here like we're trying to create movies we're trying to create entertainment so that's but there is a there is a professionalism you should have but you know it's important to acknowledge that art behind it but yeah um another thing i wanted to ask you too is so you've directed like a number of films and then seriously like i i can't even count how many the last couple of years just small ones some bigger ones and shorts and stuff like that so what what is your prep work like as a director like with your actors and your crew too like are there specific people you you like to work with that you know i've met a bunch of them and they're they're really great everyone that i've met so um what is your prep work like before going into your uh, your projects uh well first is to uh make sure i have uh, a really really good ad uh, attached to the project which of course i'm speaking of the great annie fleisch producer annie today producer shout, out annie. Producer shout, annie. Out, shout out annie she's so great that she's producing for us yeah, that's, <laughs> that's that's step one for me it's like okay have the script make sure annie's on board um but on top of that yeah it's it's making sure i have the right people i genuinely i find it tricky to like i i've found kind of like my sound person i found my camera people i found my you know genie like i found everyone that i really like working with and i'm, I'm hesitant to bring new people into that not because i want to i don't want to break out of that bubble but you get a vibe you get a feel on a set and everyone's working together and it's one you know collective heartbeat and then you just worry of that one person that would ruin it but that you know has thankfully rarely happened which is awesome um because everyone's amazing but yeah in terms of prep work i mean i tend to really enjoy and want to prioritize with every project uh rehearsals but for me i don't do rehearsals in the sense of you know oh let's block it out or let's you know uh like that one line when you give you know that i really like i don't like really give notes i just like to hear them read it because um i feel that helps not only them connect better and help them you know uh get to know each other here like i think it's just a subtle thing where like if you're only if actors are just reading their scripts by themselves and then they meet the person on the day for the first time, I think that's just such a waste of, you know, it's like you're hurting yourself. It's not, it's not going to make the product better. And for me too, I want to hear the words said out loud because I don't know if I fucked up, you know, like I want to know if like, like I want to know if like, Oh wow, that line is not good. Like out loud. Like it, yeah. that's not good. Yeah. Or if, Ooh, the way they said it, I actually really like that better. They added a few, you know, lines here and there, uh, a few words. So, Rehearsal is huge for me just to read through, hear it out loud, hear the rhythm, hear the just everything. Um, and then I'm, def I'm, I mean, thankfully, I'm in a visual medium, but I'm definitely a visual learner. And like, so I think, you know, creating a really detailed lookbook, um, I think is really important for me. I'll usually also create like a uh, sometimes a playlist like on Spotify of different film soundtracks or even just music in general that gives the vibe of what I'm going for. It's not necessarily that I'm trying to copy like, oh, I really like, you know, the Jaws soundtrack. So I want something like that for the film. It's more so like how it makes me feel. Um, so like I'm, I'm writing a script right now that uh, is more of like a kind of indie comedy type thing. Um, and so I'm, I'm listening to a lot of like indie music, like mm -hmm. 2000s indie music. And like that's helping me when I write kind of get into that vibe and stay in that vibe. And I think it's the same thing throughout the directing process. Like if I'm working on that lookbook, I want to be listening to the vibe, you know, if that makes yeah. sense. Like, it's like the tempo of it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's like you got to. Mm -hmm feel it as you're seeing it otherwise it's not going to work so for me that's kind of how i break it down uh i guess that makes sense yeah no that At makes all. perfect sense yeah no that's a lot of good prep work yeah, everybody should definitely 
take and add to their their thing but i feel i feel like uh you saying that you really love rehearsal makes you probably like an actor's favorite director because i feel like actors really appreciate the rehearsal period not only because i love how you were saying you don't want them to just be in a trailer like reading their lines and then coming up and showing up on set like there's a legitimate energy to meeting your your coworkers and the people you're going to be acting alongside and putting your all into so what is it in particular about uh not only like you said like hearing the words but in terms of the acting like your viewpoint of the actors what is it for you in the rehearsal period that you value the most another good question um i would say i mean yeah definitely you know hearing the words and hearing just how the scenes flow um but i think another thing that's really valuable is that although I think there's like, I think every filmmaker understands that, you know, no matter how many rehearsals you do, when you get on the day, there's just an energy, like, I don't know what it is, but you're only going to get that performance the way you get it on that day and nothing else. Yeah. And it's a weird thing where you could drill it into an actor, like more like this, like try the, you know, like you could really do tons of rehearsals, but you get on that day and they're just going to feel something and they're going to go for it. And like, that's such a magical part of why i mean why definitely why good casting is really important um but i think for me with rehearsals i think i also prioritize just like seeing where their mind's going like i rarely give any i'm i'm always hesitant to like i just uh something that zach produced actually um just shot a short film last week um based off of a feature script that i wrote uh set in the beautiful town of manisquan new jersey which i'm sure you're Wonderful. well aware of yes i uh, taught there <laughs> you was i taught at manisquan high school oh you years. did i forgot I about did. that yeah, go yeah. squans spent, spent a lot of time in manisquan uh <laughs> squans is that the... they're uh the warriors squans oh, yeah. warriors that's not right not right <laughs> uh cut that um the uh short film i got so focused on manisquan oh yeah the short film um um, so for instance with that, uh, I'm usually hesitant to try to give actor. I mean, I, I'm, I go back and forth on giving actors a ton of like, I really feel like this character is like this. I try to avoid that because that immediately strips them of their free will to do what they think. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, I had an instance with my lead, uh, actor who I've worked with before in the past, um, two different films. We had, we had a zoom call read through. And it was just me and him before the other actor joined on. And he said, you know, hey, so I just want to know, like, how do you see Glenn? How do you picture him as a person? What's his vibe? What's his whatever? Like, what's his story? And, you know, I, I'm not someone I don't really do backstory. I don't I don't write actors like pick treatments of, you know, in, in the third grade, he had an accident. Like, I, I don't it's, it's not valuable to me. I think that's on them. Um, but I so I, I gave him the answer. I said, well, I feel like he's like this and so forth. And. But sometimes I wonder like, man, did I just ruin it? Did I step in too much? Did I impose myself too much? Because I really love letting them read the script, see the descriptions of their character and then just imagine, you know? And that's why in the rehearsal process, seeing them in their like purest form, just trying out stuff, that gives me an idea of like, oh, okay, they think they're reading this like much more literally. Like, especially like with comedy, it's kind of hard because some lines you write it in your head and you know how it's supposed to be read yeah. for it to work. But then, you know, you hear it out loud and you're like, oh, they're going more of like a literal yeah, route. The tone of it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And like and the and the emphasis on certain words like, uh, you know, and so I, I think in the writing, trying to make that as clear as possible is definitely helpful. But yeah, I think in rehearsals, it's mainly just seeing where their mind is going and following it as much as possible while still directing it, you know, in the right direction. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, another thing I wanted to talk about, too, is you, you mentioned that. Source Shack, your your latest project was um, built around a feature. What what are some other projects that you have coming up? Is is that feature you're working on uh, in development? Yes. Yeah, so it's still kind of in the creative development phase um, in terms of just you know refining the script and just making sure it's still at the best place it can be. Um, other projects I'm working on um, in 2000. 24 uh i'm going to be making two micro budget uh features indie comedies one will be in palm springs california and then one will be in the uh, beautiful town of Howell, new jersey wow, that's um, awesome. yeah, yeah so both are going to be you know micro budget you know a lot of people that are around this area and then also people that are in la that i've met um just shooting you know a film pretty much nonstop for a week 10 days something like that 
and uh, they're shorter scripts for sure. Um, and you know, that's a big challenge for me for sure. Cause I've uh, never made a feature film before. <laughs> so yeah. um, I'm kind of using these as both not only, you know, an opportunity for more experience and more, you know, footage for reels and, and just, you know, resume builder, but also um, just really kind of seeing like, what are the similarities and what are the differences between short filmmaking and feature filmmaking? Cause sure. if, you know, I've never directed uh, a feature before. And so there's only one way to find out <laughs> and that's when yeah. making a feature. Yeah, yeah. So uh, doing that for, you know, no money following the Mark Duplass route of just saying, Hey, for a grand, go make a movie and see what happens. So that's yeah. that, those are the two things that are more uh, on the horizon, like, you know, in the near future. It's awesome. Yeah. I, I think it's, it's like features are definitely ambitious for people starting out, but there's no better way to try it out and figure it out than, than doing it yourself. So I think that's really good that you're doing something like that. But um, and I have one more question before, I don't know, we break into the other stuff, but um, what's what's a piece of advice that you would give to a younger artist that's in a similar position of they're a filmmaker or they're looking to, you know, make their own content, um, trying to get out of their comfort zone something like that i mean you've definitely inspired me with how much stuff you can make all the time and, and how how often you can pump that out so like what's what's a piece of advice that you can um pass on to somebody make films and I, mean, I, I, no, I, I mean i mean that literally uh again another yep. you know cliche that i've learned in la that's unfortunate is a lot of filmmakers talk a lot they talk about making films they say i really want to make this or i really want to make that cool who cares like yeah. everyone has films they want to make ever like short shack that's like you know my pride and joy and that's something that i know i need uh, i can't make that for you know grant i need i need sure. a real budget um but i would need real talent and to to hop on and so there's a lot of you know <laughs> things you have to weave through to make that happen but what i what can i make right now well i can make a micro budget or oh i can make a short film with my friends on the weekend mm -hmm. like and look, I, I have those moments too, where I, I am like, I don't want to make anything right now, or, oh, I don't have the budget for that. Or, oh, you know, you make excuses, but just, just make, make films. Like whether you go to film school, whether you don't, the best film school is by making films and failing. I mean, yeah, uh, it's, it's so true. And you're never going to know, you know, how to make a film and how to do things correctly by reading books or just by watching films or just by talking about it. You know, you got to actually just, you know saddle well, up and, and make yeah. it yeah that's that's the only that's the only way that you'll ever learn and, and grow and see if it's for you mm -hmm. yeah I, I like how you um you were talking about before and you used like i think it was the tarantino quote with the sports analogy because i heard something recently where I, I think it was a coach or someone talking about an athlete and how they compared the words knowledge and wisdom and how people is like everybody can be in this like we all have gain the same knowledge from the program we came from right mm. but if you're not putting yourself in those experiences you're not gaining the wisdom to grow like your mind is not actually Ooh. right I like that a lot like that's the whole thing of like i maybe de in a different way of talking about the tarantino thing it's like the yeah. older you get you're gaining all that wisdom through your experiences like do you think that that's something that resonates with you in terms of how much you're doing in la now like because you're experiencing things in a much different way you're gaining wisdom in different areas that you might not have been able to accomplish here potentially yeah i mean i also would say a big part and something that i'm still learning and i think i'll just be learning for the rest of my career is just the monster that is the you know the process of making a film i mean and making a feature um you know, I was on the phone with somebody who's going to be uh, hopping on to Short Shack as a creative producer, and she's produced a bunch of different uh, indie films and, you know, works for a production company and helps produce with those as well. And so she's very knowledgeable and, you know, she's not much older than me, but, um, you know, she's telling me all this stuff and it's like, wow, like I, I thought I knew a lot, but like there's, I'm opening up a whole new, you know, room, of, you know, building of information to be learned, you know? And, uh, cause unfortunately film is, you know, takes the green stuff. It's a business you yeah. know, at the end of the day, it is an art form and that's important to stress. But at the same time, you got to understand that you can't have one without the other, you know, yeah. the business funds yeah. the art and the art funds the business. You can't really, you know, so I would say, yeah, I mean, constantly learning. I mean, it's like um, every day I'm like, God, how would I do that? Or I can't make that now, or, you know, like learning, like that's going to cost like a, you know, a million dollars to do that film. Like I can't do that right now at all. You know, no one's going to write me that check. Um, so yeah, constantly learning for sure. And it, it's, I will say this, I think 
pushing, whether it's in New York, whether it's in LA, you know, Atlanta, uh, even Jersey on the come up right now with film, uh, wherever it is that you are in the world, like I definitely recommend some type of move. It doesn't have to be from New York to LA or a big move like that. But I do think getting yourself into a new environment, new people, um, cause LA has a totally different vibe than New York and not even yeah. just in terms of the city, but the film industry, like, you know, a thing I've learned is that films are, you know, maybe shot and, uh, production happens in New York city, but they all link back to LA because that's where yeah. all the studios are and the producers and the offices and all that stuff. So I think just getting yourself out of your comfort zone and meeting new people, creating your new network in a new city, in a new area, I think that helps so much and just shapes you and kind of cultures you as a director, production designer, whatever. Um, so, I mean, that's something I've learned for sure in LA. It's a huge culture shock, but mm. it's definitely helping, I think. Yeah. I think. God, I hope so. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's awesome. an expensive uh, culture shock yeah, for sure. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> definitely an expensive goal. Yeah. No, but... God, it's so cheap. Oh, my God. <laughs> Moved to LA. It's amazing. But, you know, it is Hollywood, so you can't beat that. That's it's Hollywood, cool. baby. It's Hollywood. <laughs> that's um, showbiz. I want to talk to you about the comedy group um because i don't have much exposure to i've seen your sketches i've seen all that type of stuff but you guys were you guys at montclair at the same time you were right yeah, but, for a couple of years for a couple yeah. of years and then right? COVID happened so we right yeah, yeah missed a half a semester but tell me how that uh formation happened and and what led you guys to forming that group and then now building out and doing like some some of the people in your group are doing stand up over and um your one buddy james lynch i know is doing really well yeah he's done really well on social media doing uh golf content yeah uh we we've became friends like literally the first day of i think it was like accepted students day i I had reached out to uh my one roommate pat farley um who's in the group as well and he you know i just literally I, i saw him on facebook and i was just like i need a roommate and i saw he was a football player and like look nothing against football player. i did musical theater like you know and I, band yeah yeah, and yeah. Band. Polar I, was like, I was like i feel like this guy you know i feel like we're not gonna vibe but then i saw he posted a picture of him in a in a musical and i was like oh okay i was like I, we got a little troy bolton action right here. i was like i like this so i messaged him and then we met up at accepted students day we started you know hitting off talking and then we were like well we got to find a table to, because they had like a breakfast thing and then we sat at a table, met James and like, and our friend, a new friend, uh, Mason as well, who's a good buddy of ours and literally just bits immediately, like comedic, just all the time. Like, oh, were oh. they like entertainment centric? Like you guys had done like musicals and things like, or were they? No. So J- well, James, uh, Mason makes music. Um, he's not in the, we, we met Sean, the, the last person of our group, um, later that year, but um mason does music james at that time had done a few tv things pat and tv pat and tv pat and james were both tv majors okay um and i was filmed so you know we were we hit it off very well we became friends that freshman year and then james and pat had the idea to say hey let's you know we don't have a camera but let's try to make some sketch videos you know and so started doing that i would direct a lot of them at first and then you know james introduced us to sean and he went to seton hall at the time and we just kind of it just kind of spiraled from there. And then sophomore year, we started doing more Instagram and TikTok like videos, one minute videos really got great success from that. And then COVID hit kind of broke us a little bit. And then senior year, we started doing uh, live performances. And so, um, but now we're, you know, also branching off into things that each individually we do. So for me, more film, Pat, more stand up, James, more social media. So we're all kind of breaking off into that for sure. Um, but we still, love performing together and uh it's a real uh real real fun time we try to put on a good show yeah that's awesome that's great yeah um but yeah i i mean those guys are great i've too i've met them several times and um it's definitely cool to see you guys climb the ladder just at in, in your own different successes in, in a way and and just how you guys are all very supportive of each other too which is really cool um i think that's probably the best case scenario to to move out to la is to at least go with somebody that you know and then be familiar with the support group that you have on the way out um so that's that's really awesome that you got to have such a group like that oh yeah no and i want want to make it clear too that like (laughs) um i had always been asked for years in film school and even in high school too, being like, oh, would you ever? Because once you hear film, everybody thinks LA. So they're like, oh, yeah. would, you, would you ever move out to LA? And I'd always be like, eh, maybe, maybe in like 10 years. You know, I never I never had a plan. But it was a professor that we had done a, a like a graduation show at our senior year in college. 
and uh, the professor who helped us put on the show and was a professor for them that I, I didn't even know that much, but he helped put on our shows once in a while. He like took us aside and was like, you, you guys got to go to L.A. And we were like, yeah, man, we've heard that before. We we're thinking like Brooklyn. You know, like we, were, we were just yeah, thinking yeah. like local. And uh, and he's like, no, you guys, you guys got to go to L.A. Like that's that's where it's at. If you guys really want to make it, that's where you got to go. And so he was the one that really like catapulted us to going. And we all just kind of looked at each other. and We're like, yeah, screw it. We're, you know, 22 at the time. Like, why not? You know, like what's the worst, worst case? We move back home. Like, that's it. Um, so I would not have moved out there if it wouldn't, would not for them. Um, cause it's scary to move anywhere, alone, let yeah. alone across the country. Yeah. You know? So, uh, very grateful, you know, at the bare minimum, whatever happens with <laughs> our sketch comedy group yeah. as a whole, it's like that, yeah. that's well, so you have much. the friendship and you have the group that, Oh no, I, I hate them. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you guys watching. I hate you guys. All the praise I just gave all of them. <laughs> yeah, right. all, all that praise. Shit. Yeah. The cue card. <laughs> next cue card. Next cue card. Yeah. Um, no, I love them. Yeah. They're, they're, they're like brothers to me. <clears throat> I wanted to talk uh, a little bit about, um, actually producer Annie a little bit. Um, producer you guys Annie. have been dating forever and, and you've also like grown up in, in film together. And that's also been pretty surreal to, to think about. Um, like just from my perspective, I'm like, wow, you guys, like I've seen you guys grow up and then also just as artists. And I think that's so special and endearing and i think that like what is that Im impact like like having a support system of, of both of you guys like have like for just two artists like growing together i think that's so awesome well i think the biggest thing is that i mean well i like to i like to compare ourselves I, uh, even though we don't talk about it a lot i like to compare ourselves <laughs> to like the younger versions of greg gerwig and noah bombeck um <laughs> just in the sense that like we're both writer director you know that type of thing um, but I, I don't know. I feel like the biggest thing is that we're constantly like, like Annie has an incredible drive and is such a hard worker. And I'd like to think that I, so are you. well, all right, <laughs> there you go. Now, now I don't have to say it. Um, but so because of that, we're constantly like helping each other out, constantly picking each other up, you know, if like. I call her and I'm like, Hey, like I just did like this location fell through. I don't think we're going to be able, whatever. She's like, that's fine. Like, let's, let's go through this. Let's try a different thing. And if she's working on a script and she's like, I'm having writer's block, I can't get past this where I'm like, well, like, let's talk through the scenes. Like, wait. so it's just really, it's like that literally it's that person in your corner to be able to like help you and keep driving. And we're constantly creating stuff together, which I think is so fun too, because like, there's not any other like AD that I would want on. I mean, she just runs that set like so well. Um, and she does it with a smile on her face, which is huge because I feel like ADs get a bad rep just because they're, you know, they sometimes have to be the bad guy. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so the biggest thing is just like, and, and it's so fun too, because I feel like, you know, you mentioned like how I've changed as a creator, but I've seen Annie change so much too, like from high school into college and then now out of college, like seeing her, the choice of genres that she would want to make films about or seeing how she, like, she's so good at like, creating like human connection like in any film like there's always in any film that's funny um <laughs> in annie's films there's always like scenes and moments where it's just like it's so like personal and, and like intimate and like that's i can't do that i mean it's like really i think every director has like a little calling card and for her that's sure that's one yeah. of hers so yeah it's just fun it's just like <clears throat> it just creates like a never-ending like what's next what's next what's next like it's just constantly trying to like keep ourselves busy um so so yeah that's really i think that's Big it's song. awesome yeah. yeah i feel like that understanding of the two of you guys knowing exactly what you're getting yourselves into too is is a is a huge thing like oh yeah being able like you said to lean on one another it's not like something where you're in a scenario with um a significant other and you're like oh i, I like i just wrote this script today and i have this problem and they're like oh like I, I can't I can't help you with that. Right. Like yeah, I'm not yeah. creative in that yeah. way. And like so the fact that you guys both come from this creative background and you're able to understand one another, I can't even imagine how no, it, beneficial that is to both of you. It's huge. And 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 I think not even just the understanding, but also no know, knowing the answers, like knowing, like being like, you know, hey, I I've been there, <laughs> like I know what that feels like, but how can we fix it? How you know, I think that's the biggest thing is like just trying to constantly any problem, fix it and move on. Or like next script next script keep writing keep you know shooting films keep doing all that so i think that's the biggest thing it's just like we motivate each other um and you know it's just nice yeah it's just nice to not like have to explain like it's basically when you're on set you have to do it like it's just nice to have to like not have that barrier as you can just kind of 
go go through it together so, yeah, yeah yeah for sure yeah you have any other questions i don't i don't know if you want to start the uh i'll, I'll start to get yeah. i have one more thing which yeah. is like because you talked about the type of films that you would like to model yourself after like or filmmakers like the edgar wrights the taika ytds you like that sort of um like comedic tone and and trying to be heartfelt and things like that i want to know like your biggest like interests and inspirations in terms of film and television over the last years like even maybe something that sticks with you from when you were a kid versus something that like maybe you've watched nowadays that you wouldn't have appreciated as you were, you were younger like the one i always go back to for my personal just to, is like um the first time i saw inside lewin davis i hated that movie like absolutely hated it and now i've seen it like 20 times and every single time i watch it i love it like even more like i learned so much more from that movie i gave it a second chance then i gave it a third chance and a fourth chance and it was something that it was because of how i matured it, i had a different experience from it so just curious on some of your because again we don't know each other that well so i want to know the things you're into <laughs> well that's an interesting question i feel like well, yeah, fil filmmaker wise, yeah, definitely, you know, Taika Waititi, Edgar Wright. Uh, I mean, my my favorite, like, even though it has nothing to do with like the style I like to make, David Fincher is probably my favorite director. I just think he rarely misses. What's your um, favorite Fincher movie? Social Network, hundred percent. Fucking go, dude! <laughs> Social, the whole time I'm looking up. That's my the, favorite film of all time. The poster ever. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. Um. Yeah. No. It's like literally. It's you know I think Tarantino has said like a few there's a few like perfect movies that are like Jaws and Texas Chainsaw mm -hmm. whatever, um, but Social Network is like a perfect film. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, and uh, yeah, and then like Zodiac. There's a lot of great films. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think in terms of like specific, um, I don't really have an answer for films that I didn't like, then I gave another shot and then I liked it again. I, I don't really have any of those because I, I tend to only rewatch films that I really liked. If okay. that makes sense. So like yeah, yeah. Whiplash, I've probably seen like seven times. Um, another Jersey boy. It's my favorite, favorite film. Um, yeah. Damien Chazelle is like a God. Um, so yeah, Whiplash is a film that I just adore. And that's again, a perfect movie in my eyes. Um, but I think, you know, something like, um, something like yeah like like jojo rabbit or like even hunt for the wilder people like it's funny because i don't even i don't even think hunt for the wilder people is like the best movie i think i gave it like a three and a half out of five like it, it didn't blow me away but it was like it was good but that style that kind of how it made me feel that's like indescribable yeah, like yeah. It, even if i didn't maybe love some of the the screenwriting or didn't love uh oh another great example i just watched it dream scenario like so that good. movie, oh, like we've talked we, about that yeah, for hours. We saw, yeah, we saw yeah, it at Montclair yeah. Film Festival. Yeah, it was incredible. Just jealous about it. Like I literally, I, I saw it the other day with Annie and I, I was laughing my ass off the whole time, but I felt every emotion. I was terrified in certain scenes. And then the ending was so sad and like heartfelt. And so a film like that, you know, let alone the sci-fi and like kind of fantastical elements, but that's a film where like that that's like something I want to capture. That idea of like having those really awkward moments where, you know, like Nicolas Cage, like no spoiler, but like Nicolas Cage would say like to his wife, like, oh, you know, I, like I can come by. I can, I'm, I'm not leaving for like four days. I can come by. And he's like, yeah, I'll see you next week. Like, yeah, yeah. like just like ignoring his quit, like that kind of awkward humor, like, like, ah, how do we get around that? Like, I love that. And I think that's something I always try to emulate. Um, I hope that answered your question. No, was, yeah, yeah. No, for sure. That's a good question, though. I, I I'm going to think about that for a long time now. <laughs> <laughs> Should we go into our games? Yeah, yeah. All right. All right, Mikey, we have some games for you. So these are our cinephile cards. No more drinking, by drinking the way. Drinking games? No, no. no. <laughs> whoa, cinephile, whoa. Again, pong. please sponsor Go to us. L.A. You think you know somebody. And you, Seriously, man. <laughs> Cinema pong. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's go. I'm going to pull a bunch of cards here. <clears throat> have you ever... Do you have some file cards? No. Okay. So I don't think are, I've ever. These are, I'll just show you for an example. That's an actor and actress on it and a role that they've played. Okay. Just showing you whatever. So first game we're going to play is Six Degrees of Separation. Okay. So you are going to have, you're going to pick two cards. Okay. And you're going to have to connect these two actors within six films of one another. Oh, so I uh, so have to name six films. No. So let's give it, let's, I guess I, we should give them an example, right? So let, let's just do one for fun. Shits and yeah, gigs. I'm gonna watch you guys. Right? You want to do one you for shits too. and gigs? Okay. We can try. <laughs> I have IMDb up anyway. All right. So the first one uh, <clears throat> we would pull is Eva Mendes. Oh. Okay. okay. 
And then the second one we would pull because the next one, the one I so you have to get one. to is Michelle Williams. Okay, oh, so you have geez. to get to you have to get from Eva Mendez to Michelle Williams through other people. So oh, so essentially okay, it would be okay. like okay, uh, Eva Mendez was in Place Beyond the Pines with Ryan Gosling. Ryan Gosling was in Blue Valentine with Michelle Williams. Oh, easy. So that'd be a quick. No, one. Uh, that's an easy. That's oh, good, so that's you good. can do it in less. You yeah, can do it yeah, less. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Oh, okay, okay. The, the the key is you want to get it in the least amount that you could possibly get. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm All d- right. I'm down there. Let's try it. All right, let's I don't know what's this. gonna happen, but let's do it. Go. The episode's three hours long. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it was, uh, how Annie, yours was pretty long, right? Yeah, mine was that was challenging. Yours it is challenging. It is. Yeah. It's, it's not the easiest game. All right. So pick two. Cards. Oh, I get to pick. Okay. Uh, let me go outside. Let me go okay. This guy. Uh, this guy. You got it. Okay. Yeah. So read them and show them to the camera. <laughs> the Nicholas Cage. Okay. Whoa! Love that. What? That gives you a lot of lanes. It was meant to happen. And John C. Riley. Okay. So oh. Nicholas Cage, John C. Riley. I do have IMDb up. Okay. <clears throat> and can I, can I go from either? You can go from either one. Okay. Um, I don't know why I'm like that'll help. Uh, <laughs> oh man, this is a tough one. Okay. It's a lot of Nick Cage movies. There are a lot. So you might. My be... biggest thing is, yeah. I think the thing that's uh, always like overstated is like just start with one. Just like whatever movie comes to your head first right. with one of those actors, just go there. Okay. And then you can find yourself a lane. John, that's how I feel. So John C. Riley, I'll just go Guardians of the Galaxy. Okay. Ooh. With what actor? With. Ooh, maybe. Uh, I guess. Chris Pratt. No, oh. Brad Bradley Cooper. Bradley okay. Cooper. All right. So, Cooper. first step here: John C. Riley to Bradley Cooper. To Bradley Cooper. Okay. And then Bradley Cooper was in. I'll go. Oh God, this is so hard. Annie, I get it. Yeah. I understand now. <laughs> um, Bradley Cooper was in. Why am I blanking on like every Bradley Cooper movie? Give me like a first letter. Of anything? He's been so many movies. Well, like, yeah, and any All right, so let's uh well, he think was in, he was in Place Beyond the Pines, actually. You can do that one oh, if you want to. I'll do Place Beyond the Pines. Yeah, okay. Do that. So okay. Bradley Cooper is in Place Beyond the Pines with who? With Ryan Gosling? Okay. Oh, he going with that? So he's going with the Gosling. Yeah. That's our second. <laughs> oh, Zachary, you keeping all right, you, you got two track. I so, got the IMDB up. So Ryan Gosling w- was in God, this is tough. I'm trying to think early. I'm trying to. I'm looking at the IMDb's now to find a lane. I'm like looking I'm to, to think see like where early, he goes like here. Like earlier Ryan Gosling, like not like Barbie, not like recent. I'm trying to think like older Ryan Gosling. Oh, oh, oh! Nice guys with Russell Crowe. Okay, okay. Russell Crowe and Nick Cage have got to have done a movie before. Oh my gosh! I don't know. There's Let's no see. way. They're like two great actors. Let's um, see. <clears throat> I don't know if they've ever been in anything together. But that might get you somewhere. Russell Crowe was in a. I've never seen it, so God, don't hate me. I've uh, he, Gladiator. <coughs> Russell Crowe is yep. leading Gladiator. Okay, okay, cool. Um, it's four. Hold on, I'm looking. Okay, well, the, I don't think you're using Gladiator, right? You were just asking. Or are you using Gladiator? Uh, no, I wasn't using it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what? I'm, no, that's Gerard Butler. Wait yeah, a minute, I actually actor. did. I find a lane. No, I didn't. Okay. I'll go. I'll go. I guess I'll go. Russell Crowe, uh, and then I think I'll. Yeah, I think I'll just do. Um, I think I'll, yeah, I think I'll just do Gladiator. Okay. And he was in with. I mean, the only actor that's coming to mind is Joaquin Phoenix in that film. I've never seen it, so it's kind of hard for me to. I don't know why I picked that film. <laughs> Uh, All right, so you're going with Joaquin. Oh, We're on wait, four. Who, who's the other, five. That'll be five. Would that be five? Who's the other yeah. actor? In, is there a the female actor? Uh, Connie Nielsen. You can go that route if you would like. No, oh, that's a rabbit that's hole. A no you also got me. Jaimon Ooh. Hansu. You could use. Oh, yeah, I could. But that his trainer, in Gladiator. Uh, he plays Juba. I haven't seen Gladiator in such king a long in time. The king. The is, king is, is Joaquin. Joaquin. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. I feel like, like Joaquin's a, older... a safer pick. Yeah, I'll do Joaquin, I guess. Okay. And Joaquin's five? Five. Yeah. So he needs to get from Joaquin to Cage. Joaquin here? and Nick Cage in a movie? I don't think that's happened. I don't think that's happened. Let's take a look. I'm trying to think. Let's take a look. Oh. Well, so let me. I'm going to list off Joaquin. So. 
definitely not like Joker, not Gladiator, not her. I'm like going far, but I don't know if they've ever acted together. You might have set yourself up for I failure, sir. Up, well, yeah, and I think. Yeah, no, I don't think they've. I don't think they've been in a. I don't think so either. Film together. I'm looking here. He's done a movie with Vince Vaughn, but he's never done a movie with Nicolas Cage. Wow! Wait a minute. There is, is there? one. There is. But I don't think any of us have seen it. Uh, can I? Is it from the year 2000? Uh, mine says 99. Know. What's the first letter? Eight. <laughs> oh my god, dude! I've never even heard of this. I've movie. never it, seen it, this. It's yeah. the number eight. Yeah, and then it's like something after it. Imagine yeah. he just names it. We're not going to give it to you. But we'll give you that. No, we'll give it to you if you get it. But I'm saying I, I don't have never seen this. Eight, movie. I neither. Eight Mile. Oh, dude, that'd be oh, hilarious. That's, cool. that's kind of <laughs> Nick close. Cage and Eight Mile. Uh, wow, wow, that's crazy that you actually got there and there's actually a movie that they've been in. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I can't think of any other movie with eight in it. Should we, should we give it to him? Yeah. All right. The eight. movie is called Eight Millimeter. <clears throat> the Joel I've Schumacher movie. Uh, Nicholas Cage, that. Joaquin Phoenix, James Gandolfini, Catherine Keener. That sounds pretty good, though. It's pretty solid for cast. cast. Yeah, I love pretty, James Gandolfini, oh, too. Can I want, who directed that? Joe Joel Schumacher. Schumacher. Oh. Interesting. Gotta check that out. Do you want to give it a different go with different <clears throat> people? Or yes. Do you, okay, all right. I will win here, this. Let me take these. I two. will. See if we can get you some easier <coughs> people here. I probably should have gone Step Brothers. I was going to say Step Brothers. Yeah, 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 with, I thought like you were going to go Boogie yeah. Nights. Boogie Nights gives you so many lanes. And Wahlberg. I've seen Boogie Nights. Yeah. Boogie Nights? I've never seen... Uh, that's PTA, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I've never seen many PTA films. I've only seen There Will, there Will Be Blood. I think that's it. <coughs> he hasn't I seen There Will Be Blood. Who? Him. What are you doing? <laughs> I've seen like four PTA movies. It's like, what the hell? All right. All this right. one harder. I feel like I'm uh, Diane Lane oh, and Angelina Jolie. Oh, get. I think you can get there, oh. but it's like, do you know how many... Like, Damn. Right. I need help. I just need. I'm cheating a little bit, but it's the second one. Would you like a Diane Lane movie? Yeah, I just need right. any Diane Lane movie because I don't know many of her films. I can't. Name I'm gonna try to give head. you a lane. Yeah, I, I'm gonna. Try, uh, that was that was not great. I said I'm gonna try to give you a lane, and I literally uh, her name is Diane Lane. Yo, All right, shut up. Let's go. <laughs> Fuck you, Zach. Let's. <laughs> All right, so we have to go from her to Angelina Jolie. Oh, this one's like what? All right. <laughs> to, I'll give you two movies that you can decide from. I'm looking at her four known for on IMDb. Okay. You have The Outsiders. Okay. Or you have Inside Out. And Man of Steel. You could also use Man of Steel if you want. She plays Superman's mom. Oh, wait. But we don't. I don't know if we want to go down a Russell Crowe track again because I feel like that's where we're headed. <laughs> you got Kevin Costner. Oh, Man of he Steel. was in Man of Steel, too. I forgot about that. <laughs> you got Kevin Costner, Man of Steel. Yeah, I'll do... Um, I'll do... I'll do Man of Steel. I forgot she was in okay. there. Okay. I, wait, I forgot. Mother? Yeah. mother, yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Martha Kent. Totally Martha Kent. That. Martha Kent. Got a truck in her house. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, so Man of Steel. I'm going to go. I'm trying to think. Probably the most. Famous actor. Who is Angelina Jolie? Oh. Oh, oh. I'm going to go. Um, uh, Lawrence Fishburne. Okay. Ooh, it's a good one. It's a good. That's a good one. And then I think from there I have to go that's Matrix right. Keanu Reeves. Okay. Oh, okay. I'll probably so that's, I'll do that's Matrix that's two. One. Okay. I guess I don't really know if it'll make a difference. Um. And then. Oh oh um oh god, what's his name? He was the uh, Agent Smith. <clears throat> what the hell's his name? Agent Smith? You mean Mister Miss Smith? No, 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 Agent, Agent Smith, Smith and Matrix. Matrix. Oh, oh, Hugo Weaving. Hugo Weaving. Um, so you're going to go Hugo Weaving. Yeah, I'll go Hugo Weaving. Oh, ooh. Oh, <laughs> wait. And then Hugo Weaving in um, uh, Hacksaw Ridge. Ooh, right? he was in interesting. Right? Yeah, he was in interesting. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Um, and then can I do director too or just actor? We can bend the rules. Well, Angelina was a director too. Well, no, because I was thinking so. Mel Gibson. But I don't know. Okay. Um, we can we can give you that if you go want. For it. Well, go I, for could, it. I could also just do Andrew Garfield. I feel yeah, like that might be my best. You're bet. at four. <laughs> How the fuck are we getting to Angelina Jolie here? I don't know. I'm trying to think. Um, I think you can well, do if it. I can do, if I can do Mel Gibson, there's also Vince Vaughn in that movie. There oh is. yeah, he is in that. <laughs> 
Surprise. Yeah, right. Yeah, I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> um, who's the, who's his wife in that movie? I Wasn't Angelina her. Jolie in Ocean's Eleven? No. No, it's Julie Roberts. Uh-huh. Damn. Now I'm looking at Mel Gibson here. I'm like, how's he getting to Angelina Jolie? <clears throat> I'm trying to think of other Mel Gibson films that he's been in. Even that's a stretch. Yeah. Mel Gibson? Yeah. I mean, I guess you could go Braveheart, but then... Where are you getting oh, yeah, Angelina then... and Braveheart? Yeah. Or from well, that'll be because that'll be five. <laughs> yeah, that'll be five. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, I feel like I'm gonna have to go. Um, I, I, maybe I'll go Mel Gibson. He wait. He was in. Um, Mel Gibson was in one of the. Wasn't he in one of the Expendables movies? Uh, yeah. yeah, pretty sure. Yeah, he was. Expendables yeah. three. Yeah, Expendables three, and that was one with. Uh, well, I think he's been in other ones, but Wesley Snipes, right, and Ronda Rousey. There's a lot of people in that, yes. so you might have a that. safe pick. That's why. I, that's why I went this way. Uh, oh, come on, there's got to be a Jason Statham movie that she's been in, or um, was it not probably not Arnold. No, maybe Arnold actually. <sighs> trying to read. I don't know. Faces. I don't think. I don't think. Got, <clears throat> that film is like stacked. There's got to be something. I'm looking. I'm looking right now, but I'm like, what? Because Angelina hasn't acted in so long. Like in a lot of True. stuff. Well, that's what I'm trying to think. The older like, actors like uh, Arnold or <clears throat> Sylvester Stallone. I'm looking. Or. There's. She was in a De Niro film. De Niro wasn't in Expendables though. No, no. But a different. Yeah. So oh, I'm thinking older actors for you. She was in a Denzel movie. She was in. This is tough. Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Salt. The Tourist. <clears throat> I don't think we're getting there, man. It's tough. It's tough. It is tough. Wait, what number am I right now? Four. Four. Ooh, okay. Never tell me the hots. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. You just said Mr. and Mrs. Smith. That's Brad Pitt. And there's Brad Pitt. And Brad Pitt was in a movie with... So what? many. I know. So he's been in a lot of movies. That's what I'm thinking. That's my best <clears throat> This is a good game. Think of one of the good Expendables stuff. people, probably. Well, that's what I'm looking. That's I what mean, I'm looking at right now. The three oldest I can think of is Arnold, Sylvester. Has Harrison Ford ever done a movie with Brad Pitt? Had to. Have. Yeah, I think he did. Yeah, he did. Harrison Ford is an Expendables three. All okay, right, so I'll go Harrison Ford. Okay. And then now it's just a matter of finding a Harrison out. Ford and Brad Pitt movie. There is. It is there. It is there. Okay, I'm going backwards yep. now. Yeah, that's right. I I have seen this movie. <clears throat> I don't know if you've seen it. It's a '90s movie. Ooh. Oh, I've never seen it. Wait, wait. I've was, like kind of heard of it. Where was Thelma and Louise? Ninety-one. Yeah, something yeah, like that. Yeah, because that was Brad Pitt's yeah. first yeah, film, yeah. right? Yeah. So this is post that, so he's probably still kind of a smaller role. It's 1997. Oh, I, okay, I feel like Mikey doesn't know this movie because <laughs> I barely know this movie. <laughs> uh, what was the first one? Was eight, nine millimeter? <laughs> <laughs> Why are there so many millimeter films? Um. You guys both don't think I would get, I would know it. I I mean maybe. Have you seen his '90s stuff? Like most of it? Mm, no. Well, here was Fight Club. That was '99. This is a couple years before that. Yeah, definitely not that. Uh, give me the first letter. <coughs> I'm milking the. It. Yeah, I was just saying, give me the first <laughs> word. It's just the. <laughs> Should so we move on to the second game? Like you're we did with screwed. Andy? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, let me. Just, I'm just gonna the. The um, devils, devils, devil wears Prada. <laughs> the devils, the devils of the devils blank, the devils bowl, <coughs> the devils. Oh. You bitch, devil, devils carnival. The devils own is the movie. The devils yeah, own. And that would have got, got that, Mister and Mrs. Smith. Which they're making a new one of. The trailer came out today. They did a show. Donald Glover and Maya Ers guy. Oh. Yeah. It's TV unfortunate there's no other original content they can I know. Too. It's a real shame. IP hunting. Yeah. All right, we're going a different <laughs> route. This game requires no legitimate thought, I don't think, really. It's just I'm going to give you two cards. Okay. And we'll start with one, and then I'll give you the next one. And uh-huh. you have to say your favorite 
Oh, performance. Oh, okay, yeah. By that actor and your favorite film that that person's it's a been. lot simpler. Okay, yeah, a lot way simpler. simpler. Cool. Okay, so here's your first one. <laughs> Jolie to Jolie. Oh. Oh, Robert Redford. Oh, okay. Well, um, this definitely isn't his best performance, nor is it your favorite. This is your favorite yeah, performance. I mean, I, I think one of the few films I've seen him in was Winter Soldier. I knew you were he is good at Winter Soldier. Yeah, like that, honestly, yeah. he's. I mean, look, it's a Marvel movie, so say what you will. I still think it's it's definitely one of the best. But he gives a great performance. He plays a very like cocky, arrogant. Like I, I love the way. I remember not even knowing because I was only 14 at that time when I, when I came out, but seeing that performance, I was like, wow, he's a great actor. Yeah. And that was like one of his last films, I think, right? In, in recent times, yeah. Yeah, because he, and, uh, he retired like a few years ago, right? Did he retire? Yeah, like that. I haven't retired. seen him in anything in a while. He did so. The Old Man and the Gun, and that was a couple years ago. I think that might have been his last movie. I think that, yeah, it might have been. I want to see that. I still haven't seen that movie. Yeah, yeah. 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 But he's, he's a great actor. He's like one of the best of all. And then, fa- so would you say like, the favorite I, movie yeah, you've seen too? I haven't seen many of his. Have you seen All the Presidents, man? No. Oh, that's a great one. Yeah, you would like that. Yeah. All right, here's your second one. Okay. Is that a good one? Winona Ryder. Okay. Oh, man. If you want to move it to TV, I'll allow it for this. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm 100% going to go Stranger Things. Um, That first season, like, she kills it. Like, she's so... I mean, that first season of Stranger Things is, like, I think, one of the best seasons of TV, like, ever. Um, But, yeah, she, like, just... Like, her, like, constant... Uh, disbelief and like just fear of losing her like oh god it's just so good and like she also fits so perfectly probably because she was what like biggest probably in what 90s yeah probably or maybe later she was doing like girl interrupted and beetlejuice i think was 90s too right right yeah yeah and, yeah. and i think uh heathers was the 80s but right. yeah. i think everything else that kind of came up and gave her the stardom was i think in the 90s because i know um when she was cast as for in stranger things like at that point in her career she was a bit older she hadn't done as much she kind of her popularity had kind of waned over time um but then she just went into that and just stole the show i mean like it's you know there's so many great performances in that season and just show in general but yeah she like amazing like that that's so so i would say again same thing for for both can i do one more you want to do one more sure. yeah i want i'm hoping i do you want to pick you want to pick one here yeah <clears throat> i want one that's like a different film and a different <laughs> oh yeah yeah <clears throat> oh this guy does that work nope never even heard of that person <laughs> Uh, Kim Bassinger, Boston. Oh, Kim Basinger. Kim ba- oh, yeah. Uh, I like Confidential. Robert Redford again. Oh, what? That's the bu- I just put him back in there. Sorry. Oh, this is on me. This is on the Ow. host. <laughs> I saw it. It's Jane Fonda. What? <laughs> She's someone that I. These all older people. We might argue. What? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Well, really? Like, well, like, so I've seen. Really? I, I'm trying to find one that like oh, is, okay, right. I know enough about to give a different answer both times. That was okay. Uma Thurman. I only know her from like Kill Bill. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you. Say, I'm gonna give you this. Okay. One. So like. Okay. I feel like that. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Daniel Day-Lewis. Great. Perfect. That's a good one. Um. Okay. So I would say. Best. Hmm. And again, doesn't have to be best. It's your favorite movie that this actor has been in, right? And your favorite performance the actor has given because they're not always. Exclude. the same yeah yeah yeah. No, yeah yeah i would say i mean i think performance i would say there will be blood i think that's pretty a common answer i feel like he just is so good in that uh who hasn't seen it? you haven't seen it right i haven't seen it yeah so you can't you can't spoiler don't, don't listen uh <laughs> No, but his yeah, his performance. I mean, there's so many great clips of you know the I I drink your milkshake. I'm yeah, sure yeah. you've seen that. And you know, <laughs> I've seen the South Park episode that is inspired by that. Oh, I don't watch South Park. Oh, that episode's so good. Yeah, Have you seen that episode? No, no, not South Park. Oh, yeah, I can't, I can't get into it. I yeah, see, why. I got the source material. You got the whatever. <laughs> that, that other stuff over there. Um, yeah, there will be blood. Definitely my favorite performance of him. And then I would say favorite film that I've seen him in. Um, Although there's definitely a lot more that I w- that I want to watch uh, of him, uh, I would say definitely Lincoln. Lincoln's a great movie. Yeah, oh. and, and I saw that at Howell. Mrs. Did? Draper played that. Oh, really? Wow. In class, yeah. At the end of the year. Wow, so good. It's a great movie, and I mean that's like up there with. Perf- I mean, he really just becomes. I guess what I think Lincoln would be like. I mean, he he just blends into the role so well, and also uh, Sally. Uh, Field, Sally Field, yeah, Sally Field. She's great in that too. Oh. Like the whole cast, like, but yeah. In terms of film, not even like my favorite Spielberg, not, nothing like that. But um, 
yeah, great movie overall, really historical and just like informational of, you know, what the president was thinking at that time. So, yeah, those, yeah. yeah, those, those are my answers. That was what I wanted. That was a great. There part. you go. You got your one. 50 later. That was awesome. It's all good. <laughs> Hey, man, it's been an absolute pleasure having Same you on here. Jersey's Finest. It's been really great getting to know you through uh, through the culture wave. It's, oh, been, yeah. it's been awesome getting to talk to you. And um, I'm excited to see all the things that you do in the future, whether it's on the West Coast, the East Coast. And, and thanks for coming in while you're home. And it's been awesome. Thank you for having me. This is a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah man. This has been great. Yeah, we don't need to hang out anymore. No, we're good. This is it. This yeah, is where we're coming out. We've reached our this quota. This is a bookend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> This is the end of your guys' friendship as we know it. <laughs> oh, God. All right, guys. I think that's going to do it for us. Uh, if you guys don't already, please follow us at Cinema Wave Media. We're on Instagram. We're on Facebook. We're on threads. We're everywhere. Uh, you guys can also follow us at underscore Culture Wave Media. And this podcast right here, Jersey's Finest, you can follow us at Jersey's Finest Pod on Instagram. Be sure to like and comment your thoughts. Did you guys enjoy our conversation with Mikey? You want to see him come back on? Maybe next time he's in Jersey, we'd love to have him on again. Also comment if you didn't like it. I want to hear like, I want to have some discourse. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I want to be like, I want people to comment like Zach Miller. Shirt choice? <laughs> oh, 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 no. oh, he's a comedian <laughs> now. Oh, that's why they get him paid. Okay. Oh. oh, I love it. Great. <laughs> Get off my set. <laughs> well, right. uh, guys, it's great. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Oh my God. All right, guys. That's going to do it. I'm one of your hosts. I'm Darian Scalamoni. I'm Zach Miller. Mikey Smith has left the building. We'll see you guys next time.